Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Vincent May and today I'm with Beverly Brodsky, an international painter. She's going to have a show very soon. Would you like to tell us a little more about this show, Beverly? Of course. Um, the show, first of all, is from March 3rd to the 24th and it takes place in Chelsea uh, at the uh, Carter Burden Gallery, which is on 28th Street. And my show uh, really concerns my love for painting and also my love for, uh, for color. I have a passion for color. And all of my abstract expressionist paintings uh, are, have an interest or a focus on, on color. And um, I've, down through the years, over the years I've been influenced uh, by many different uh, kinds of abstract painters, including uh, the cave painters of, let's say, Let's Go, the ancient Chinese and Japanese painters, and uh, the calligraphy, uh, and not so much stylization, but more the um, atmospheric uh, approach to perspective, and um, uh, the gestural quality of uh, painting. And um, what I'm hoping to do uh, with this exhibition is to keep the idea of painting alive. I think that's very, very important, uh, especially, especially gestural painting. Well, I think that's really nice that you're trying to keep painting alive. It's an art form that is sometimes getting lost in today's technology, as we've spoken before about how in technology, a lot of people are capturing art with photos and exposing it on the computer now, mm -hmm. but Beverly here is a really, she's a really, um, she loves natural art where it's coming natural from the soul and from the earth, and it's something that has to be able to be touched. And if you could tell me a little bit about your relationship with canvases, how do you like to start yeah. your painting process up? It's a very interesting way. First of all, I like what you said about nature and uh, the natural process. I'm very, I have a, a very, very strong connection to the earth and the natural elements, uh, the four elements, fire, wood, earth, and air. And of course the, um, the Japanese and maybe the Chinese also have uh, a fifth element, which is called wood. Um, so, but everything is connected uh, to the earth and also the geological processes and layering of the earth's surfaces. So I keep that in mind while I'm painting. Um, and my process is, uh, especially uh, in the beginning, when I'm, first of all, stretching the canvas and gessoing it, I think it's really important to um, have uh, the, a vibration, a sound, that comes through and from the canvas a special kind of vibration, almost like a drum. Um, and I think of, let's say, the drums of Aboriginal people all around the world, and how the drum is a voice, and how a painting becomes a, a voice, in a sense. So that particular vibration within the sound of the canvas uh, is important, as well as the vibration that comes from color on the canvas. So after I do the stretching of the canvas, I sit uh, in front of it when, after it's gessoed, for example, uh, to see if there are any uh, forms that I can identify that is coming from uh, the nature within myself. In other words, a, spir a certain spiritual nature. Um, and then. Uh, I'm guided by that. I'm guided by the, uh, the art that seems to invent itself as I'm painting. Now, Beverly, would you say that the process that you go through when you paint, would you say that, uh, would you um, put it in a short phrase that it's sort of a just do it instead of think about it? You're more of a person who puts your paintbrush onto the canvas and whatever comes to you and however you feel is whatever you express on the canvas. Exactly. Um, I think I'm a, a very intuitive kind of painter. I am not a methodical painter where I go from 
one, two, three, across the canvas or down the canvas. I am not methodical at all. Um, that's why a certain amount of time meditating in front of the canvas is important. For example, many of the Japanese and Chinese painters would sit in front of a landscape for many, many hours and meditate. And then they would go home to maybe the palace uh, or whoever commissioned them to do the work and, uh, and paint indoors, not necessarily actually looking at every single um, uh, piece of grass or, or branch or tree or petal of a flower. Um, every, everything uh, comes through the memory and imagination of the artist who is making uh, those paintings. And so I very much uh, am connected to that idea. Right. And Beverly, yeah, no, I want to take this time not only to ask you about your show or your inspiration, but we're also sitting in front of one of your pieces of work that you've done in the past, mm -hmm. and I was hoping that you could tell us a little bit um, something about it as like uh, sort of a, uh, a prequel before your show to oh, sure. get the audience to be interested. Absolutely. Um, this is from a series of canvases called Incantation. And I guess what was going through my mind um, during the process of creating this canvas were the rhythmic incantations of uh, shamans or uh, shaman, shamanistic chants inside the caves. Could have been a man or a woman, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't always a man who was creating the paintings inside of a cave. This would allow them to connect to the natural forces, such as the animal world, um, and therefore also the spiritual forces. Uh, and they would uh, make a connection to the spirits and um, go through uh, a door or a portal uh, to enter into that spiritual world. And, and so I have a series of canvases that are based on this uh, uh, this idea of connecting to a spiritual world and try to bring it into the canvases and into the painting. But it takes time. And many of my paintings, by the way, take at least six months. It used to take a year oh, wow. to make one painting. Mm -hmm. but, but because of the layering process, just as I explained that the earth is layered constantly um, and even during volcanic action and, mm -hmm. and, and something like that. Um, I really like how you're connecting your paintings to the different layers of the earth, how, yeah. how long it takes to make one layer and how yes, long yes, it takes yes. for you to make a painting. Yes. It's a process and I yes. think that comes from your uh, your idea of how the painting is very natural. Mm -hmm. it, it can't be something that is made method uh, by any method where you finish it on a date that you say it's going to be finished. It just Absolutely it comes not. natural, and right. I think you know the it's, painting invents itself. It right. speaks for itself. It's a voice. Right. Uh, in a sense, it's an entity mm -hmm. unto itself, and I think that's important for for me to realize constantly. You know that. Right. Uh, the painting will take as long as the painting takes, and, and there's no deadline, and I can't have a deadline. It's very, uh, this kind of layering is called glazing, you know, where you have um, a wet on dry uh, glazing method. Okay. Uh, and what happens when you do glazing mm -hmm. is that uh, you're building up the layers in order to create depth in the work. Mm -hmm. So uh, very often, let's say the Japanese painters on a screen painting uh, will paint uh, the other side of the screen in the indigo color, which was a very expensive color at the time. Uh, indigo is like a plant. Right. Uh, nowadays, it's made from uh, chemicals and chemistry. Mm -hmm. But so that they would layer, uh, they would paint the back of the painting in order to create that kind of depth. Right. And so, uh, without that idea of depth in a painting, um, it, it, it wouldn't work for me. I don't like the idea of being totally flat. Right. 
I, I would like it if the viewer could enter into the painting and walk around almost inside of it. And go through all the layers that That's it right. took to make the Yes, yes, absolutely, okay. wow, absolutely. That is... I feel very, <laughs> very passionate about that. You know, I see, okay. And about the layering of colors. I see. So you're very big on layering, very big on nature. And, yes, and yes. And very big on taking a long time, just as if like the yes. earth was taking a long time to yeah. Yes, uh, developed. absolutely. Right, now also Beverly. Oh, and, 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 and mm -hmm. with the textures, uh, I mean with the layering you get a lot of textures also. Oh, okay. So the, so what happens is, is that there's this visceral quality. Right, something uh, that's more than just 2D. It's more yeah, like something that comes like through the skin. Okay. You know, in a sense, that's what visceral means, the mm -hmm. viscera, you know, this is it's very much um, um, through through the uh, physicality of making a painting, right. and um, through the body, through the skin, brings it um, alive. Brings it brings it, alive. it very much alive. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, that's a good. <laughs> I like, I like the way that you try to explain what visceral means through your body language. <laughs> <and> <laughs> Thank you. I You're appreciate welcome. That. <laughs> but also, Beverly, I wanted to speak about how, you know, I understand that you're an artist for a very long time and you have a very big resume and there's many important things that you've done. And I'd just like to ask you, what are your greatest achievements that you think are, that you hold really dear? Oh, my goodness. Um, there, there are many um, uh, grants I, I received from foundations. Um, exhibition at the... Uh, Arts and Embassies uh, program, mm -hmm. um, uh, where I'm showing, uh, let's say, uh, in um, South Africa, right. and also during the Ebola epidemic, actually. Oh. Yes, okay. so my work went uh, to uh, that area. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, and, and also uh, in Bahrain, uh, Bagawan, Bahrain, right now that it's on view for about three four years so it's on loan from the arts and embassies program that is run by the state department mm -hmm. well and yeah yeah that's and very impressive and i you know also I, i'm showing my work in the netherlands okay as well mm -hmm. so that's wonderful and um uh, New York Foundation of the Arts is, is uh, was a wonderful grant that I received um, uh, as well as the uh, Gottlieb Foundation grant. Right. So I have Connecticut Foundation for the Arts grant as well. So right. there, there's like a whole list of wonderful uh, things that I have been able to enjoy mm -hmm. throughout my 40 year career. That's it's quite, a long, quite it's a a time. long time. Quite I can hardly time. believe it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I can hardly believe it. A lot it. of memories to look back on. Well, as we come to a close on uh, this interview, Beverly, I just wanted to thank you for your time. Oh, you're for, uh, Thank you so much. Your work I and everything. It, uh, and uh, yeah, I hope to yeah. see your show soon. At, um, again, the address is at. It is at 548 West 28th Street between 11th and 10th and we'll run from March 3rd to the 24th. Well, great. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Beverly Brodsky for you, and my name is Vincent May. Thank have you. A, have a good night.